congratulations, you're one of the unlucky technicians that has found a VRV3 system out in the wild that has an error code. And you open the panel to find that it's not the normal display that you see on most Daikin equipment. Instead, it's a binary display. That's right, it's blinky lights. The lights that nobody likes and everybody hates. This video today is going to show you exactly how to conquer the blinky lights, understand what they show you, and actually find the error code listed inside the outdoor board. Now remember, just because the error code is listed at the thermostat does not mean that you just go off of that and start troubleshooting. You have to confirm off the outdoor board that that's the error code that it sees. Remember, error codes can be like a sandwich. It can have multiple layers of error codes. And although the error inside shows a U4, the outdoor unit might have an E2 or an L5. Again, I've got a paper copy of a manual today and we're gonna go through it. Maybe you're not super familiar with what the blinky lights actually look like. So let's take a closer look. Here you can see I've got an array of lights, H1P, H2P, 3P, 4P, 5P, 6P, 7P, and 8P. Now just to, for reference, we don't ever reference the 8P unless there's something really weird going on, so just go ahead and ignore that light now. The other ones you're going to see here is I reset my unit because actually it works. You'll see here that H2P is flashing and H3P is solid. This is the initialization light. The system is going through a self-check mode right now to determine whether or not it has an error code, if it can run, and if everything inside is communicating. If you see something like this that's not abnormal or difficult to troubleshoot, we're going to wait until this actually gives us either a solid H3P light, which is the happy light, means there isn't any error codes, or if we get a solid H2P and solid H3P. Now in order to explain to you what the actual blinking display means, we need to cover a few things first. First is, in Japanese culture, they read right to left. So our H7P light is actually our one count. It's a binary display, which means these numbers build all the way to the last light, which equals 32. So as you can see here, each one of these has a specific number at the top, but also they hold a specific place value in understanding the binary code display that we have in front of us. On top of that, also, if I go over here and I press the mode button once, it will go into mode one. This is monitor mode. Monitor mode is designed to allow you to see all of the read-only points on the system, what error codes it might have, how many indoor units are connected, all of the good things that we need to find. If I hold down the mode button for five seconds, it goes into what we call setting mode two. Setting mode two is apparent because the light on the far left, H1P, becomes solid. This is the uh, mode in which we actually set setting mode 2 settings, such as fixed target evaporator temperature, uh, refrigerant recovery mode, inverter test, all of the good things that we would normally need when we're servicing a system. Now, in referencing the service manual, you're going to find here this is our binary display. When I'm in mode 1, H1P is flashing, which I just showed you. You'll notice here that there's actually a setting here that we can look at. For this specific one, we're actually going to go all the way down here to mode 1, setting 14. This means this is the contents of the malfunction for the last error code. This is any active error codes that might be present on the system, or at least the last error code for this specific system. Notice over here on the right-hand side, these are the appropriate lights that should be displayed if I'm in this particular setting. So let's do it. So let's get into mode 1. I'm going to press the mode button one time. Now I have a flashing H1P light. Now I need to go ahead and hit set 14 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Notice how the lights count up to equal what we saw in the service manual to know that this is the right setting. Now that I've selected the right setting through the set button, I hit the return button to go down into the setting and see the last error code. You're going to get a set of flashing lights. These lights are meant to be documented in the next part of the service manual to determine the letter designation of the error code. Once I understand what the lights are and what letter that I'm looking for, I hit set to go to the next screen. When I go to the next screen, you'll notice that the H3P light has changed and the flashing combination is different. Now, this is the number of the exact error code that I'm looking for for this particular model. If I press set one more time, it will give me the third layer content of that specific error code and then the fourth layer of that content for that error code. Now, there are four layers to this specific setting 
and if I click the set button again, it will take me back to the beginning of the error code where the letter designation is at. Now remember that some error codes have four letter designations. For VRV3, there are usually only two. Same with VRV3S, uh, but for VRV Life, there are four digit error codes that you can reference. And again, when you go into this mode, there are four separate levels. Right? Once we go into setting mode, one, 14, right? One is the monitor mode, 14 is the actual setting. This is the display, right? Letter, number, then these would be the subcategories after the error code if they were applicable. There are no lights because there is no two other sections. This isn't a U4-03, this would just be a, say, a U4. Now again, that's how we determine the error code for VRV3, VRV3S, and also VRV Life. Anything with a binary display. To exit this, we press the mode button again to go back to the main menu, and that's it. Not so difficult after all. Now that you know how to reference the service manual and also what the binary lights mean, you can now confirm what kind of error code you have and start troubleshooting the system. Don't forget that some systems, the binary lights can be very dim on the display due to its age or even damage to the board itself. Remember that just because you see an error code inside does not mean that you can trust it. You need to reconfirm on the outdoor unit that the error code you're seeing is the most active error code and what is keeping the equipment from running. Remember, once you resolve an error code, you do have to go back and reset the system. Stay tuned for another video about that. See you guys on the next one.